Hey, my name is Tom and welcome back to Low Carbon Lifestyle. We are now two years into living with this heat pump. And if you believe what you see on the internet, we've been freezing cold for the last couple of years and the cost has been through the roof. So with two years worth of data, I can answer that for sure. How has it, been, how's it performed? Has it kept us warm? How much does it cost to run? And what has it done for our emissions? So two years of a heat pump. Do I have any regrets? My name is Tom, and this is a little series about a low carbon lifestyle. Let's get straight to it. Our heat pump was commissioned two years ago on the 13th of July, 2021. So I took some readings last year on the 13th of July, 2022, from our electricity meter and our heat meter connected to our unit. So this is all the energy the system needs to power the heat generation, but also pump water around our system. I missed the 13th of July this year because I was on holiday, but I've managed to get a few, some readings a few days later. So what does it say? Well, in last year, we've used 3,863 kilowatt hours of electricity to produce 12,171 kilowatt hours of heat. This is actually 137 kilowatt hours less electricity than the year before, but 330 kilowatt hours more heat. We've used less, but we got more out. And that means that for this year, this last 12 months, we uh, the efficiency has increased from a COP of 2.96 or 296% to a COP of 3.15. So for every unit of electricity we've used, we've got three units of heat out. Between year one and year two, our system has increased in efficiency by 6%. Result. So what does that mean for costs? Well, the last year has seen the highest energy costs that I can remember, and I suspect the highest energy costs ever. So using any energy has been very expensive. We did have this price guarantee that meant that electricity was capped at 34 pence per kilowatt hour, gas was capped at around 10.3 pence per kilowatt hour but that was still really expensive and that 3.4 to 1 ratio means that running our heat pump would be more or less break even with running a gas boiler but let me talk you through that maths so if our heat pump had an average uh, efficiency an average cop of 3.15 that means that our costs per kilowatt hour of heat would have been 10.79 pence so every little bit of heat we had would have cost us 10.8p. And how does that compare to a gas boiler? Well, assuming that you've got your boiler running very efficiently, we could assume an efficiency of 95%, so that every kilowatt hour of gas you use, you get 0.95 kilowatt hours of heat. At that efficiency, it would mean that a boiler would deliver a kilowatt hour of heat at 10.84 pence. So a tiny little bit more expensive, half a percent at that efficiency and at the price gap. I reckon I've been fairly conservative in that calculation, particularly towards boiler efficiency. There will be many examples of boilers running much less efficient than 95%, and there'll also be lots of examples of heat pumps running more efficiently than 3.15, than a cop of 3.15. And that was on the price guarantee for that most of us have seen the last uh, 12 months. But I haven't been on that price guarantee over the last year. And I've talked about this previously that we've we've had been on some of Octopus's smart tariffs. First on a day night tariff that gave us cheaper electricity overnight. Then the Octopus Cozy tariff designed for heat pumps that gave us cheaper electricity overnight and in the afternoon. And finally on the Agile tariff that varies the price of electricity every half hour, trying to get you to move away from that peak time between four and seven. Our average rate for all the electricity we used over the last 12 months, so powering the heat pump also, charging the phone and charging the computers and cooking and all this kind of stuff, our average rate has been 29.1 pence per kilowatt hour. So for us, at our heat pump efficiency of 3.15, our cost per unit of heat was around 9.2 pence. And that is 15% lower than a 95% efficient gas boiler using gas at the price guarantee rate. So to deliver that 12,171 kilowatt hours of heat that we've used in the last 12 months, our costs would have been around £1,125. 
if we'd have used that high efficiency gas boiler, our cost would have been £1,319 or £194 more. £194 more. £194 over a year is fairly meaningful. And we don't have solar panels. We don't have a battery. We live in a Victorian terrace that's got some insulation improvements, but a Victorian terrace heated by a heat pump and it's £194 cheaper to run than a gas boiler. Love it. In the last kind of six months, our neighbours has just installed a heat pump, solar panels, and then most recently a battery. Their costs may well be much lower than ours, but maybe this is for another video in more detail. But an example using our figures, if, if with, our, with our heat pump system delivering 12,000 kilowatt hours per year of heat, if we installed a 3.5 kilowatt solar, solar PV system to support it, we'd expect to gener that to generate around 3,000 kilowatt hours of electricity per year from our roof. And let's assume that because we have a heat pump, we'd use two thirds of that generated electricity in our house. So let's say 2000 kilowatt hours per year. And that would mean at a rate of 29p per kilowatt hour, we'd save around 580 pounds over the year. Solar panels generating free heat and free power would mean that our system would be much cheaper to run than a gas boiler. And if we added a, ba a battery, we might assume that we'd use 90% of what was generated. And that would mean a saving of 780 pounds per year versus a gas boiler. With generation on the roof and electrified heat, bills could start getting very low indeed. Our neighbours have got solar panels, a heat pump and a battery. We don't have them yet, but we're still saving 194 pounds compared to an efficient boiler. Amazing. And what about emissions? Heat pumps are all about reducing our emissions. Well, in delivering that 12,000 kilowatt hours of heat, we used 3,863 kilowatt hours of electricity. And that would have had emissions associated with it from the grid, um, because we still have some gas power stations, we still have some coal power stations, and even low carbon stuff, really, we should count the, the emissions that goes into manufacturing a solar panel or a wind turbine, etc. But if we just use that 3,800 kilowatt hours of electricity, with the, the average grid emissions, that would have emitted around 800 kilograms in a year. To deliver the same amount of heat that we had from our heat pump with a gas boiler, we'd expect to see around 2.35 tonnes of CO2. So our heat pump between 2022 and 2023 reduced our heating emissions by 66% and over 1.5 tonnes of CO2. And the thing about the heat pump is, as the grid decarbonises, as we have more wind turbines, more solar panels, as we move away from coal even further and as we move away from gas, that really expensive gas, then the emissions linked to heat from our heat pump will get less and less. So this is an example of a heat pump heating a Victorian terrace with double glazing, yeah, with a small extension built to modern building regs and with lost insulation. That house in County Durham in the northeast of England. It's an example of that heat pump saving money, saving almost 200 pounds a year and saving CO2 over 1.5 tonnes. And the papers are still writing that heat pumps don't work. In more modern homes with better insulation, we're likely to see even cheaper costs to run a heat pump. Over the last 12 months, I've uh, bought into the subscription or to the membership of Ripple Energy. And in the next 12 months, our subscription will begin. And that's going to reduce our electricity costs by around six pence per kilowatt hour. So our heat pump will be even cheaper to run. And then at some point in the future, we may as well hit that solar panel button. We shall see. So I asked at the start, do I have any regrets about installing a, a heat pump to heat our home? Well, you know what? I've learned quite a bit about heat pump efficiency through Twitter, through YouTube installers and people like Heat Geek, um, Mike Salmon from my hometown of Southport, uh, Simon from Urban Plumbers. And I think if I was doing all this again, I might have asked for some bigger radiators or some more radiators. And that would mean that we could get the flow temperature of our system down a little bit and get the efficiency even higher. But do I regret getting a heat pump? Not at all. This has been the single biggest step in reducing our emissions at home. And it's now saving us money. And I'm thrilled to be able to tell people all about it. So what do you think?
Over the last year, we've saved around £194 to heat our home with a heat pump. If we assume an installation cost after the boiler upgrade scheme of around £6,000, then we don't have much of an attractive, what we call payback. And a simple calculation would suggest that that payback is around 31 years. But when we're investing in a home for more than just the money, a simple payback doesn't make sense. We need to consider the 1.5 tonnes and the path to zero carbon that the installation makes as well. As well as then potentially the added value on the home that adding a heat pump would give. I've talked before in a few videos about our options for decarbonising heating in the UK. Basically, it comes down to install a heat pump. So with that one option, let's make the plan and get it done. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or reach out to me directly. I would love to talk things through.